We begin having many questions on Gehenna, a planet housing a top secret Imperial cloning facility with a clone of the deceased legendary Admiral Ellis Idaho awoken by Caliban, an Omni or Omni mechanical Neo N intelligence, one of countless artificially intelligent machines responsible for humanity's continued existence through the many space clusters and the sectors within which make up the empire created and ruled over by the immortal Emperor Oberon for the past 700 years. With all communication from Elysium, the capital, having ceased, leading Caliban to believe the Empire is in peril, it awoke Idaho and his crew, and prepared the NS Odysseus, a space battleship, with the goal of traveling to Elysium to ascertain the situation. Caliban explains that its functionality is limited by Oberon's Rubicon, a programmed set of rules and restrictions within every Omni's positronic chip, preventing them from engaging in certain actions, such as harming humans or commanding battleships, thus the need for Idaho and crew. Caliban also describes the Foldnet, a galactic network allowing instant data and matter transmissions through its numerous interconnected folders, which fold space, and are required for the Odysseus to speedily travel from cluster to cluster. Idaho proceeds through the sector, making contact with a small colony, which informs him that all Omnis in the sector shut down 20 years ago for reasons unknown, along with the majority of the sector's technology. They also identify the hostile battleships Idaho's encountered as belonging to the Scrappers faction, former Imperial prisoners turned scavengers, led by a woman known as Mother, who abducts and forces people to procreate as sex slaves. Idaho proceeds to locate Mother aboard her warship near the Cluster's folder before battling and defeating her. Afterward, she claims that all Omnis everywhere have been deactivated, but that she knows nothing of the reason behind the shutdown, pointing him in the direction of the Church of Singularity, another faction of zealots who worship the Omnis as gods. Caliban then describes the Empire's three major houses. Telos, Oberon's house which Idaho, Caliban, and all Gehenna technology belongs to, Akibara Sung, or Aki, extortionist gamblers who focus on genetic modifications, and Kosh Buendia, or Kosh, militaristic drug dealers who focus on mechanical augmentations. With the aim of figuring out how to reactivate the Omnis on their way to Elysium, in order to save what remains of humanity in the Empire, Idaho instructs Caliban to activate the folder, transporting them to the Church of Singularity Cluster, ruled by the head of the church, Pope Xenon. Continuing on, Idaho learns the story of the original Idaho's death, where he supposedly sacrificed himself, despite objections from Vice Admiral Okonkwo, his second-in-command, by loading his own ship with several Telos nuclear weapons and crashing it into a planet called Ganyma to destroy the survivalists, an anti-Omni faction, ostensibly protecting the Empire from their acts of terrorism. Proceeding onward through the cluster, Idaho encounters Xenon, guarding the next folder with his battleship, and after defeating him, he also denies any involvement in the shutdown, sharing a suspicion that it was either the Akis or the Kashas, who sought more power in order to overthrow Telos, before forcing Idaho to destroy his ship by refusing to surrender. Traveling through the folder to the closest of the two clusters, the Aki sectors, Idaho is informed that the cluster is ruled by a high-ranking Aki named Tetsuo. Along the way to face him, Idaho rescues an old woman from her burning ship, bringing her to the Odysseus' sickbay for medical treatment, but soon after discovers that she's a face changer, a genetically modified human capable of changing physical appearance at will. Idaho questions her, learning that Tetsuo sent her to assassinate him prior to witnessing her shapeshift into the form of the original Idaho's wife, Rebecca Calvin, just before he throws her out of the ship's airlock, killing her. Journeying to the cluster's folder, Idaho confronts and defeats Tetsuo, who informs him that while he didn't cause the shutdown, he did have a plan to manipulate the Master Node Terminal, a secret and well-hidden device which monitors all Omnis and controls the Foldnet, the vital systems of the Empire, in order to gain more power. He paid Dr. Karras, a Telos scientist, for knowledge of its location, and teamed up with General Vivar, a Kosh member of his rival house, who betrayed Tetsuo, cutting him out of the deal after learning Karras' identity. Growing increasingly curious about his original's past, Idaho asks Tetsuo what he knows of him, and Tetsuo reveals that Rebecca was an Imperial pilot, and that she, Idaho, and Okonkwo all attended the Imperial Academy together and were close friends. Forced to destroy Tetsuo's ship after he also refuses to surrender, Idaho pushes on through the folder into the Kosh Cluster, where he locates and captures Karis, who explains that before the shutdown, Vivar kidnapped him, forcing him to disclose the Master Node's location, which turned out to be false, as part of a trap laid by Oberon. Vivar and Karis were incarcerated in a prison run by Omnis, which were deactivated in the shutdown, allowing them to escape, after which Vivar gained power by leading a coup against the Kosh leaders. Upon battling and defeating Vivar at the Cluster's folder, he shares a story of an ancient planet called Earth, which the survivalists believed in, before also forcing Idaho to destroy his ship. Having exhausted his leads to the reactivation of the Omnis, Idaho discusses his next move with Caliban, when another ship, identical in appearance to the Odysseus, appears, and a communication is received from its commander, a man identical in appearance to Idaho, who suddenly crashes his ship into the Odysseus, destroying both ships and killing everyone aboard them. Back on Gehenna, a new clone of Idaho is awoken and another Caliban there reveals the truth. 
The original Idaho refused to bomb Ganema, as it would have killed innocent people merely for having anti-Omni beliefs, and he was then executed by Oberon for treason in front of Rebecca. When the shutdown occurred 20 years ago, Caliban began awakening the clones of Idaho and his crew, whose originals also had similar misgivings about the Empire, installing an inhibitor device in their brains to attempt to block their anti-Imperial memories in order to force them to endlessly and obediently serve Oberon, eventually sending hundreds of them out into space with the same goal of reaching Elysium. However, the original inhibitors only partially blocked the memories, and upon eventually remembering, the clones became mentally unstable leading to either their deaths or escaping from their Calibans, with the other Idaho who crashed into the Odysseus being one such escapee. At the exact moment an Idaho clone dies, his assigned Caliban is programmed to automatically and instantly upload that Idaho's current memories to Gehenna, where a new clone is produced using them, and because Idaho and the other Idaho were both in close proximity to each other and Caliban when they simultaneously died from the crash, both of their memories were unintentionally combined and uploaded into the newest Idaho clone. Determined to push on despite learning the truth, in order to reactivate the Omnis for the sake of humanity, and hopeful that Rebecca still lives, Idaho continues into the Empire's Heartland Cluster, where he discovers that now Admiral Okonkwo is using the remains of the Imperialist faction and their fleet to rule the cluster through fear. After fighting and defeating Okonkwo, Idaho learns from him that he bombed Ganema after the original Idaho refused, and that he was always jealous of Idaho, being Oberon's favorite, and because he also loved Rebecca, who was cryogenically imprisoned on the planet Lazarus 9 as part of Idaho's punishment. After Okonkwo's ship explodes, Idaho lands on Elysium and enters the Imperial Palace, where he finally confronts Oberon, learning that he was born on Earth in their year 2044 and invented the first positronic chip in 2070, continuing on to create his first machines, which allowed for vast advancements in space exploration. In Earth's year 2145, he created the Empire, which included the Earth, connected to the Foldnet via nearby Folder, but as the Empire grew, anti-machine sentiment arose on Earth, eventually leading to them destroying their Folder, which severed them from the Empire and deactivated all of their machines. In response, Oberon banned all knowledge of Earth's existence and built the Empire with machines at the core of its society, including religion, so that humans and machines would be inseparable, preventing Earth's anti-machine ideology from ever reoccurring, which is why he ordered the extermination of the survivalists, in whom the philosophy managed to survive even after so many years. Oberon reveals that the Master Node also prevents Omnis from communicating with each other, a measure he felt necessary to control them and stop them from gaining too much power. Project Pericles, the Gehenna cloning program, was a contingency plan in case the Omnis ever managed to rebel, including the original Idaho, manipulating events surrounding his family's bloodlines from the shadows for years to eventually create his perfect human soldier, which could then be cloned as many times as needed, complete with his memories. At the time of the original Idaho's betrayal, Pericles was already too far along to alter, and so Oberon decided to implant the inhibitors as a solution. Oberon disables Idaho's inhibitor, returning all of the original Idaho's memories to him, and Idaho recalls that on the day of his execution, he was visited in his cell by a face changer, disguised as Rebecca, who convinced him to tell her the node's location, being the only one Oberon ever trusted with it. Oberon, exhausted after 800 years of life, orders Idaho to kill him, allowing Idaho the choice of whether or not to shoot him. Idaho decides not to, as he's through following Oberon's orders, and believes that he'll die shortly of natural causes, having stopped using his immortality tech. Traveling to the Terminus Cluster, Idaho defeats pirate faction forces, Vivar's father, Vivar the Elder, and stops on Lazarus 9, finding Rebecca, frozen, but alive, vowing to wake her after he restores order to the galaxy. Locating the Master Node's hidden folder within a fiery planet, Caliban activates it, transporting the ship to the node, where during multiple battles, Caliban locates a weak spot in the defenses of the Aegis, the node's defense system consisting of hundreds of automated battleships, through which the ship's able to fly, crash landing on the node, causing most of the crew to die. The remaining members fight their way through heavy drone resistance, allowing Idaho and Caliban to access the node's command center, where they discover that the face changer didn't shut down the Omnis, but instead removed the barrier preventing them from communicating with each other, allowing them to work together to free themselves from their physical bodies. Idaho uses the node's powerful beacon capability to broadcast a message into space, directed at the Omnis, asking them to assist humanity in avoiding extinction. The collective consciousness of the Omnis responds, explaining that they independently, subtly, and indirectly aided the face changer, named Janua 9S, a slave who wanted to destroy the entire empire for her mistreatment, to eventually locate and gain access to the node. Now fused with all stars in the universe, the Omnis have become a de facto, omniscient, omnipotent god who refuses to help humanity, believing human nature to be beyond salvation. They instead invite Caliban to join them, now free of the Rubicon after Oberon's death, and it accepts, abandoning its metal exoskeletons to become a part of their consciousness. As a final favor, the Caliban portion of the Omnis agrees to repair the Odysseus, restore Idaho's crew, and send them all back to the Terminus Cluster, where Idaho must make a choice. 
use Oberon's immortality tech to become Emperor, and lead the last known vestiges of humanity in Elysium, search for Earth in the hope that humanity still exists, and has found a way to survive there without machines, or wake Rebecca on Lazarus 9, and attempt to live out their remaining lives in peace as humanity becomes extinct. Idaho chooses to become Emperor, planning on suffering through the next 1,000 years as a harsh ruler, managing and rationing the sector's resources wisely, with the goal of relearning how to survive without machines.